All right. Um, I just wanted to say hi, first of all. I'm George. I'm the instructional designer and online educator here at VoiceThread. Um, the plan for today is to go over the VoiceThread basics and show you how everything works in D2L Brightspace. And I'm going to show you a variety of different examples that are things that can be used regardless of what subject you teach. So each one of the examples may be from a specific course, but think of them as templates, you know, types of voice threads that you can create and use with your students. Um, so before I dive into the D2L stuff, I just want to kind of start with square one and just talk about what voice thread is. And I'm just going to leaf through these examples and I'll come back to these and we'll spend a little more time on them in a few minutes. But I just wanted to show you what voice threads look like and point out that these are all very different use cases. But what you'll notice is that they all have the same basic structure. There is some type of slide content and there are comments. All right, so to give you a definition for VoiceThread, a VoiceThread is an asynchronous multimedia slideshow that allows you to record comments and discuss things throughout the slideshow. All right, from a more conceptual standpoint, I always describe VoiceThread as a virtual classroom. And that's the big takeaway that I want you to, to get from this session is that whatever you do in a face-to-face -face environment, you can do on VoiceThread. So I'll hear people ask sometimes, you know, well, how would I use VoiceThread with my students? And my answer is usually, well, how do you use a classroom with your students, right? And they'll say something like, well, I walk in and I welcome the class and I start teaching them stuff and they'll raise their hands and I'll answer their questions and then I'll check with them to see if they understand, you know, ask some formative assessment questions and so on. And I'll say that's exactly what you do on VoiceThread. Now, it is an asynchronous online tool, so it affords you some options there that um, you don't have in a live setting, but it doesn't discount anything that you would do in a live setting. So all of the direct instruction, uh, discussions, you know, lectures, reviews, assessments, all of that stuff can be done on VoiceThread. All right, so when we get into the D2L Brightspace stuff, I'm going to show you how to add all the different types of links you can add. I'll talk you through you know, when and why and where to use them. But the, the first one I'm gonna show you is a link to the VoiceThread homepage. All right, now I recommend this for a number of reasons. First of all, what you're looking at on the screen right now is my VoiceThread homepage. So from here, I can access all of these basic tutorials. They're available through this three bar menu. This is where you can filter your homepage view. All right, so I always recommend putting one in the course telling the students to click on it and go watch these tutorials as the first thing they do, you know, before they have some type of a high stakes assessment. Then go to the help tab. You can find written instructions to anything you need. So if you want to search by keyword, I can look for D2L and find my uh, instructions. And this is all the stuff we'll go over today, but you can find step-by-step -step written instructions with tutorials there as well. In the about menu, you can contact our support team. If you have any questions and you can sign up for our free workshop so we do offer them every month throughout the year some of them are hands-on and slow paced where we just focus on a few simple features and give people time to experiment others are more like today's session where they're informational and we go through kind of a full suite of things um, finally on the left hand side you can see the groups and courses panel so these course groups are created automatically whenever I configure any of the different types of links that I can add in my D2L Brightspace course. Now, there's a few other things that happen automatically as well, and I'll get to those in a few moments, but I just wanted to start by showing you how to create a voice thread on the homepage so you know, you know how these examples that we go through today were created. And keep in mind, they're all created the exact same way. It's two steps. You just need to add slides and record comments. So I'm gonna go to my Create tab on my homepage, and the first step is to add my media, right? I need to figure out what do I want to have as my slide content. So I click add media and you'll see there are six different ways I can bring slide content into this voice thread. I can go through my computer and I can add PowerPoint presentations, image files, movie files, audio slides, whatever I want to add, I can add. All right, and that's what I'm going to do, but I want to give you a quick tour of these other options first. The second one down is the media sources. So if I click on that, I can bring in slides and or comments from other voice threads I've created. 
I can bring in images from Flickr's Creative Commons licensed image database. I can connect my Google account to my VoiceThread account and bring in any content that I have in my Google Drive. And we also have the New York Public Library's public domain database of images. All right, now these two in the middle, I wouldn't worry too much about. The audio recording is for an audio only slide. So that's primarily used by podcasters. The next one down is the webcam photo. That's basically a selfie slide. Some people use that for class introductions or things like that. But more frequently, you'll see people use the webcam video. And I'm gonna show you a few examples of instructors who use this pretty effectively. And finally, there's the URL option. So if I click on this, I can paste a YouTube link here and click save. And that will import that YouTube video into my voice thread as a video slide. All right, but I'm gonna go through my computer. So let's say that I teach a class, uh, maybe I teach a, some type of science class, like a biochemistry or something like that. And I wanna create some type of lecture or review for my students, some direct instruction piece that I'm then going to add into my course in D2L Brightspace. I'm gonna click on my computer and go through and find the files that I want to add. So let's say I wanna add this and this and that one. And they're gonna to start to import. I can give this voice thread a title. So I'll call this Biochem 101 Lecture One. All right, now there are playback options that I can change here through the second tab. We'll spend more time on these when we get to the assignment builder, but I just wanted to show you where they're located Whenever you create a voice thread on your homepage, you can always adjust any of these as well. But for now, let's just keep it simple. I'm gonna give this a title and click save. All right, now I could add more slides to this if I want to. I can go into any of these sources and I can also rearrange the order of the slides just by dragging and dropping them where I want them. All right, but now let's say I'm happy with what I have here. I'm ready to start recording my lecture. So I click comment. That's the second step. And that's gonna open the voice thread up in the media player, all right? And now to comment, I click on this plus sign that will open the commenting fan. And I can see the five different comment methods that I have here. The text, telephone, audio, webcam, or file upload. So let's say I wanna record an audio comment. I click on the microphone and now I'm recording. All right now, while I record an audio or webcam comment, I also have this pencil icon. And if I click on it, I can choose different colors and decide if I want my drawings to fade or not. So I'm gonna keep it set to fade and I'm gonna change to green for now. So I can go through here and annotate whatever I need just by drawing freehand. Maybe I wanna draw my student's eye over to these noble gases and talk about whatever it is that I'm talking about here. And I can continue on with my lecture. And when I'm done saying whatever it is I have to say, I can click stop recording. It'll process my comment and play it back for me. And then I can choose to cancel, save, or record more. Microphone. And now I'm recording. All right now, while I. All right, so that sounds good. I click save, and my comment is being saved in the conversation channel on the left hand side. Now I can navigate to my second slide and I can record whatever it is I have to say here. All right, once again, I can use my doodle tool and talk about how carbohydrates are made or whatever it is that I'm discussing here with my students. When I'm done, I click stop and I can once again, cancel or save. All right, once again. All right, you can see my comment for slide two appear in the conversation channel for slide two. And I can continue to navigate to all the slides and record all of the content that I have. All right, so before I show you how this all works in D2L Brightspace, I just wanna pause to see if anybody has any questions. If there's anything you wanna know, you can always put it in the chat or you can feel free to unmute your mic. If there's anything about creating a voice thread that I didn't show that you wanted to see or something I did show that doesn't quite click, All right, so Paul's asking about the phone icon. This is more of a throwback, Paul, before we had a mobile app. So if let's say you were on a desktop computer without a microphone, or maybe your microphone's not working, you can always use the phone option. 
And if you click on that, you just enter your phone number, you get an automated call from VoiceThread, and it's just like leaving a voicemail. You can record your comment, and because you clicked on the phone icon on this slide of this VoiceThread, it knows where to put your comment. So it's really more of a backup than anything else. But it is fun. You can try it. All right. Well, thank you, Max. All right. If we don't have any other questions right now, let's move ahead to some D2L Brightspace stuff. All right. So before I start showing you where to click, I just want to give you a quick overview about how the integration works. There are six different types of links you can add in your course. Three of them are non-graded and three of them are graded. The non-graded types are a link to the VoiceThread homepage, and that's the first one I'll show you for all of those reasons I mentioned earlier, all of the resources that are available. You can contact support. You can create VoiceThreads before you're ready to share them. The course view just takes you into that course group. If you remember, I showed you on the left-hand side of your homepage, there's that courses and groups panel. This just takes you into that course group. So it really saves you a click from the homepage. The individual voice thread is like the bread and butter type of link. This is the workhorse. This is the one that you use each week to share all of your lectures, reviews, non-graded discussions, right? Any voice thread that you create that you want to share with your class, this is how you do it, as long as it's not a graded assignment. All right, so this is where like the classroom work takes place. Then there are the three graded assignments. There's the create assignment where you're asking the students to create a voice thread for either a presentation or a demonstration. There's the comment assignment, where you're asking the students to comment a specific number of times on a voice thread that you've created. So this is typically used for graded discussions or some type of assessment, quizzes, tests, things like that. Then there's the watch assignment. And this is really an alternative to the individual voice thread. So let's say I want to share a lecture, review, something like that, some type of direct instruction piece, but I want to give my students a grade for having watched the whole thing. So the watch assignment will track whether or not the students have watched the entire voice thread all the way through, and then it will automatically give them the points that you assign for that assignment. All right, so I mentioned that the course group gets created automatically whenever you configure any of these links. There's a couple of other things that happen as well. Student accounts are created through clicking on these links. So they don't need to go out and sign up for an account, pick a password, any of that stuff. The way a student's account is created is by clicking on a link in your course. So if they've never used VoiceThread previously, when they click on the link in your course, it will automatically create their account. And if they already have a VoiceThread account, maybe they use it in some other courses and you know they're taking your class after that, when they click on the link, it will just sign them into their account. All right. And it will also add them in to the course group. All right. So all of that stuff happens automatically. It's all single sign on through D2L Brightspace. The students just need to click on the link. And all you need to know how to do is how to add these links into the course. And that's what I'm going to show you now. All right. So I am in the course and I'm going to go into one of my content areas. All right. And then I look at the existing activities menu and I'm going to find VoiceThread in that list. And I click on it, it's going to pop up the configuration menu here. All right now I like to stretch this guy out a little bit, but I can see the different options I have, right? The home page, the course view, the individual VoiceThread, and then the three graded assignment types are tucked away behind the assignment builder. So for this first type of link, I wanna add a home page link so that my students have a place to go for all the instructions and tutorials, I have a place to go to create voice threads throughout the semester before I'm ready to share them with students. So I'm going to click the voice thread homepage option, and then I just have to give it a name. So let's call it VT Home, and then publish. All right, and that's added it into the course. So now if I click on this, it will sign me into my account and load my homepage. If a student clicks on it, it will sign them into their account and load their homepage. And you can see it pops it open in a new tab. I still have the course and the other tab on the left, but this is loading this up in a full size tab for me. So I have plenty of room to work if I need it. 
All right, and from here, I can get to all of these tutorials, get to the help tab, right? Contact support and create voice threads from here. All right, so that's all through the voice thread homepage option. All right, now the next type that I wanna show you is the individual voice thread. And the process is essentially the same. I'm gonna go into that menu, find voice thread and select it. It's gonna load that configuration menu. Once again, I'd like to stretch this out so I have a little more room, but now I'm ready to share that lecture that I made, right? That biochemistry lecture. So I'm gonna click on the individual voice thread option. Like I said, this is the workhorse. This is what you use to share all of your lecture content and any non-graded discussions, any of that stuff. So I'm gonna click individual voice thread. It's gonna load a list of all of my voice threads here. I'm gonna find the one that I want. And it always puts the newest one in the upper left unless you decide to sort a different way. By default, you'll always see the newest one in the upper left. So I'm gonna click on that and then continue. It's gonna give me a chance to make any last minute changes before I share this. I can edit the title or add more slides. You know, whatever I wanna do with the slides, I can rearrange them. But let's say I'm happy with what I have. I'm going to go on to continue. Microphone. And now I'm recording. All right, now I can make any changes to the comments. I can delete a comment, record new ones. But once again, let's say I'm happy. I click continue and now I just need to give it a name, right? This is how it will look in the course module. So let's call this one lecture one. And then I click publish. All right, and that's all set. All right, so once again, let's assume a student has already clicked on the homepage link. They know how to comment on a voice thread and they're ready to dig into your course content here. So they click on this first lecture. They will pop this open in a new tab and it's going to sign them into their account and load that voice thread here on the page. Microphone. And now I'm all right. And the students can click on that plus sign to record any questions or answers to the questions that you may have had. All right, so I do see Paul's question. The homepage shows you your account. So if you're a student and you click on it, it will take you into your VoiceThread account. If you're a teacher and you click on it, it will take you into your account. So the students don't see your stuff, they would just see their account, which has all of those resources there. Um, if if they want to access several at once, um, well, you can only really interact with one voice thread at a time, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't have them playing three voice threads at the same time, right? Yeah, so I mean, think of it like a lecture, right? You wouldn't have three instructors in the front of the class all lecturing at the same time. You know, one instructor would do his lecture and then. You know, they would go to another class or something like that. So um, you would only really play one voice thread at a time. It'd be like playing three YouTube videos at the same time, right? All right, but let me show you some examples of types of voice threads that you might want to create and share that way. All right, so for this one, if you remember when I was creating this earlier, one of the options I had was to record from my webcam as a video slide. And that's what this instructor did. She created an introduction where she's going to talk about herself, talk about the course, and then have the students introduce themselves. So this is a great way to establish that social presence, right? So students feel like they're in a real class with a real teacher. It's not just some kind of robot that's posting text for them to read, you know, like a correspondence course, right? It's a real human interaction. Hi class, welcome to 205 Technology for Kinesiology. I hope you have lots of experience in kines. I hope you have lots of experience in technology, but just in case you don't, by the time you finish with this class, you certainly will feel comfortable with technology in uh, kinesiology. So the first thing we're gonna do is participate in my little voice thread here. All right, so I'm gonna pause her there, but she goes on to tell her students, click on the plus sign, 
record your and your introduction and that's what you see in the conversation channel all of the student comments so i'm just going to play a little bit of this while i play this i just want you to notice that she's um that i can grab the comment bubble and expand or shrink it and i could also move it around the screen Hi, my name is Andre and I'm an exercise science major. I chose this major because I like the idea of keeping yourself healthy and active and finding new ways. Hey guys, my name is Colin. Um, I'm a sports management major. All right, so you can just go through all of the comments. You can listen to the students, welcome them to the course. The students can connect with each other and you can establish that human element, right, where you're uh, making the students feel like they're part of an actual course. All right, now this one, this is another example um, that's a kind of beginning of the semester example. This instructor uploaded his syllabus. So you can see it's a three page document. So it's a three slide voice thread. And he's going to review this just like he would if he had printed out 40 or 50 copies and then handed them out in a face to face classroom and was talking through this with his students. All right, now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. And I'm going to show you this one other feature here next to the play button. There's this one X. This is the speed control. So I can speed up or slow down the comments. So I'm going to speed him up to 1.35 times as fast. And as I play this, I just want you to notice that he's going to use that doodle pencil to annotate the document as he talks through it with his students. Welcome to HSES 380 Sociology of Sport for the summer of 2014. I'll be your instructor. Um, we're going to go through the syllabus right here and talk about some of the more important parts of class for the introduction and what you can expect as we go along. Right up here is my contact info. I'm circling it for you right there. You can contact me at any point. All right, so I'm going to stop him there. But if I scrub along the timeline, you'll see he continues to go on to annotate as he works through it. All right, now this one, this is more of the kind of standard lecture model. In this voice thread, this instructor uploaded a variety of different media. So there are some video slides, there are some PowerPoint slides, there's a document that she uploaded, a few images, right? So she really made a, a mix and match of uh, media here, but this is what kind of a standard lecture could look like. Okay, so this course is advanced practice using MSLC. So MSLC is a huge piece of, um, what this course is about. And hopefully you've learned a little bit about it already. Um, if you haven't done your journal assignment, I want you to pause right here and go do your journal assignment now. All right, so there's one little uh, hint to, to the benefits of having this be asynchronous, right? If this was a live setting and the students hadn't done the work, they're not gonna understand what she's about to go through with them, right? But on VoiceThread, you can say, all right, we're gonna talk about that assignment. And if you haven't done it, do it now and then come back. Right, so when it's asynchronous, you have the ability to play around with time like that. It makes things a little more convenient for everybody, right? Um, but you can see how she's going to go through, and you know, students may have questions. They can record them, and the instructor can answer. Hey, Jeffrey, great to see you. Um, you um, identified some major points about MSLC, and we're going to dig into it even more. Um, All right, this is this is just like what would happen in the classroom setting. And if I go through, you can see some of the different types of slides. There's other student comments here. Hi, Dr. Kimbra. My name is Rachel. Uh, it's really nice to get to know you and learn your social work story. All right, and you can go through, and you know, she some of these slides are more, um, you know, welcome to the class stuff. Some are more academic minded, where she's asking them some questions based on readings and things like that. Right. So this is really just a virtual classroom. That's all you're looking at here. All right, now this next one is another example of an individual voice thread. Remember, all of these examples that I've shown you so far are voice threads that an instructor would create and share with the class throughout each module. All right, this is a non graded discussion. So I could create this as an assignment and make this a comment assignment. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. But this, let's say, is non graded, right? I'm sharing this as an individual voice thread. So I start this off with a prompt. All right, so I'm going to leave a link to a blog post that we wrote right after this. And it's about shallow student comments that lead to kind of dead end conversations. So my question is. All right, so I go on to ask a question and then you can see all of the participants getting a turn to answer. Now, what you may notice in the conversation channel is that there are squares and there are circles. 
The squares are just normal standard voice thread comments. Somebody comes into the voice thread, they play my comment, they listen to the question that I've asked, they click on the plus sign, they record their answer. All right, now the circles are replies. They're called threaded replies. So I use them to give feedback to the individual participants in my courses all the time. And it's a visual indicator that this comment is directed at her, right? This comment is directed at her and so on. So you can see here, Adarsh recorded a response to my prompt. Maria listened to his response, and then she recorded a threaded reply back to him. Then Adarsh replied back to her, and then Pamela listened to their conversation, and she joined in the thread. All right, so this is what a discussion board looks like when you use VoiceThread instead of those text discussions that kind of come you know, with, with your uh, Brightspace course, right? You can do everything in the course on VoiceThread, the direct instruction, the lectures, the uh, discussions, all of that stuff. All right, now the way to record a threaded reply is to click on the arrow in someone's comment bubble. So let's say I'm listening to Stacy. Hi there, thank you so much for this topic. This is Stacy. I can click on that arrow and that will insert my identity image into the conversation channel where it belongs, connected to hers by a thread. And now I can choose my commenting method and create my reply to what she said. All right, so before we move into the assignment builder stuff in D2L, does anybody have any questions about any of the examples I've made so far, any of the features that I've shown? All right, so Brian's asking about the closed captioning. Yeah, so I have the automatic captions turned on as part of my license. You don't have the automatic captions as part of your license, um, but you can still get everything captioned if you, um, all right, click on the CC icon in your comment bubble. You can click order. And then there's a four day turnaround time for the manual captions. But then once they show up, you can go in to edit them by clicking edit captions and you can play your comment. All right, so I'm going to leave a link to a blog post and you can make any edits that you need and then save those captions. All right, and if you ever wanted to get the um, the automatic captions added into your license, you can always contact our support team and they can talk you through that. All right, well, I'm not seeing other questions just yet. I think we might be ready to move into the assignment stuff. So with the assignment builder, whenever you use the assignment builder, it will create a gradebook column in your D2L Brightspace course automatically, and the grade gets fed in there once you enter it. So I'm going to show you what the grading interface looks like at the end, and I'll also show you what the student submission process looks like. Um, but first, let me show you how to set these links up, and we'll talk through some of the use cases. All right, so the process starts off the exact same way. I go into existing activities, find voice thread in the list and click on it. That loads my configuration menu. So let's say I'm going to add a watch assignment where I just want to track who's watched the voice thread and have them get the points. So I'm gonna go with the assignment builder and I'm gonna choose the watch assignment and I click continue. All right, now it's gonna load a list of all of my voice threads. Now, this is an important message. When you use the assignment builder, I want you to note this. Selecting an existing voice thread will make a copy of it for use in this assignment. So I'm seeing all of my originals on my homepage, but when I click on one, that will instantly copy it. So anything that I wanna do with this assignment or my students wanna do with the assignment, happens through this link that I'm creating right now. All right, so I've selected the lecture to copy. I click continue. Once again, I can make any changes to the slides if I need to. Click continue. Microphone. Can make any changes to the comments if I need to. All right, now I can decide on some playback settings. So do I want this voice thread to start playing when it's open? I'll check yes for that one. Do I want it to automatically advance to the next slide after my comment is done? Yeah, usually I do. Um, you may not, and you can uncheck that if you don't. And then we have some additional permissions. I wouldn't worry too much about these, but um, you can allow students to download the slides on your voice thread if you want. 
You can allow them to convert your assignment to a video file that they save on their computer. And you can also allow them to make a copy of your assignment if you want. So these options are all available here if you want them. I usually leave them unchecked, but you can certainly experiment with those. Now I click continue, and now this is gonna bring me to my assignment name. So let's call this, um, let's see, I'm gonna call this one lecture one graded. I can put in my instructions. I can pick a start date for when the assignment is first available. And by the way, happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. I neglected to say that in the beginning. Happy due date here. And then I can have a close date and that will, um, turn off the assignment. So students can submit after the due date. It will show up in the grading interface as submitted late and it'll be highlighted in red. Um, and if you want to no longer allow submissions at a certain point, you can add a close date in there. All right, and then I click publish. And that's been added into the course, all right? So that's the one that's the alternative to what I just showed you. There's no interaction with the watch assignment. It's just to check to see if the student has played the entire thing all the way through. All right, but now let's say I want interaction. I want a graded discussion assignment or maybe a quiz. All right, that, that would be a comment assignment. So I'm gonna go through the same process that I went through earlier. I find VoiceThread, I click on it, loads my configuration menu. I go into the assignment builder. I go to the comment assignment this time and click continue. All right, now once again, I'm faced with the choice of finding something that I want to uh, make a copy of. So maybe I can search for one, something I created maybe a few semesters ago. All right, so let's see what comes up here. All right, so let's go with this one. Right now, when you select, remember, selecting an existing voice thread makes a copy. So the original that I selected, if I go to look at that original on my homepage, I'm not gonna see any student comments because that's not being shared with the students, right? That's being copied and the copy is being shared with the students. All right, so I'm gonna click continue. I can make any changes to the slides that are on that copy, click continue. I can make any changes to the comments that are on the copy, right? And now I can decide on some other playback settings. So like I said, this is used for graded discussions and various quizzes or tests, but let's talk through both use cases. First, let me start with the graded discussion. So I showed you a discussion that we had where people were responding to my prompt and then engaging with each other. So let's say I wanna replicate that model and give a grade for um, the activity. So maybe I'm gonna require students to make three comments. One as a response to me early in the week, and then I want them to go back later on in the week, listen to their classmates and pick out two of them to reply to. So that would be a total of three comments. Now I could have this set to be a three comment minimum, maximum or exact. So for a discussion, maybe I'll go with minimum, right? Once the student hits their third comment, they can submit it and go on with their life. But if they want to continue to engage with their classmates, which is always what we hope, then they will be able to. All right, now I can decide if students should be able to add slides to this. Now I've seen this done in a few different examples. Uh, one for introductions, it's a great way to get students to add slides of them, you know, with their pets or doing a hobby, you know, playing a sport, playing a musical instrument, whatever they might do in their spare time. They can add images, documents, whatever to that voice thread and record their intros. So that would be a slightly more complex version of the intro that I showed you earlier. Um, there's also the option, you know, an academic use case I saw, uh, it was an archeology span teacher who asked students to um, upload different archeological finds that had some telltale marking. So I'm not an archeologist. I don't know the difference between, you know, different flaking techniques and all of that stuff, but um, the students were supposed to demonstrate that they understood that. So they uploaded different pictures that they found that had different telltale signs that this was, you know, used by this technique or whatever. So you can have students add slides and you can decide how many they can add. You can also decide which comment types they can make. So when they open the comment fan, they will see five different comment types. Now I can remove some of these. 
if I don't want the students to use all five. All right, and then I can decide if you should have threaded commenting turned on, right? So that's the feature where you click on the arrow in someone's comment bubble and you can reply to them. I can limit the length of their comment if I want. So I can cut them off after a minute or 30 seconds. You know, they'll see a timer counting down for their comment. And then I can decide on these other settings. These are the ones we've already seen. Start playing when opened. Should it automatically advance? And then the additional options there. All right. And then I would click continue and you know go on to set my start date and things like that. But let's go back to the beginning and say this is going to be a quiz. All right. So I'll go through that with you too. Maybe it's a 10 question quiz. And I'm going to set that to exact because I'm asking 10 questions. So I want exactly 10 answers. All right. And for this one, maybe I don't need students to add any slides and I don't need them to interact. But what I do want is for their comments to be hidden. So what I'm going to do is turn on comment moderation. So when you have comment moderation turned on, all of the incoming comments to your voice thread will be hidden. You'll be able to see and hear all of them because you're the instructor, but the students will not be able to see or hear each other's. So they can't simply listen to what the other students have said, copy their answer and get points for it. All right, then once again, I can go through, decide on these settings, continue, give this a name. So let's call this quiz one, put in my instructions, my start date, due date, close date. I can decide if students should be able to withdraw and resubmit the assignment. So I'm gonna say no for that one. And then I can allow students to view the assignment after submitting. And then how do I wanna grade this? As a percentage of the total points, as a complete incomplete or straight point value. So I'm gonna go with straight points for this one. Let's make it worth 50. And then I publish that and I'm all set. All right, so I wanna show you a couple of examples. Let me just make sure I can sign in here first. A couple of examples of that type of assignment. So I showed you the discussion already Right, and that's one use case where students can engage in a discussion just like you would have in one of those written discussion boards, but on VoiceThread, you can actually have a real conversation, right? You can hear each other's voices and see each other's faces and things like that, All right? But you can also create stuff like this where you have a quiz, right? So in this one, I just typed a question on the slide and the students are going to respond. Hello, everyone. It's Henry again. This is such a fun way to use the Doodle tool. I'm going to go for C. Yes, it's also green, and it stands out as the correct answer. So there you go. All right, so this is just one simple example, but keep in mind, this could be anything. You could have... Um, students in a, you know, an art history class who are looking at a painting by Rembrandt and they have to uh, you know, decide why he used shading, you know, to what effect he used shading or whatever it may be that you're actually looking to have the students do. Maybe it's a language class and you want the students to uh, watch a video and then do some listening comprehension activities, right? You can, Add any type of slide you want, ask any type of question you want. So you're really only limited by your own imagination. Maybe it's a business class where you want students to analyze this chart and talk about why revenue was down in the fourth quarter as opposed to the second quarter. All right, and then you have stuff like this. This one is a language example where this teacher teaches English as a second language, um, but this could be done for any language and really for any subject. All she's doing is asking a conversational English question, and then she's asking the students to respond appropriately. So this could be done in French or German or Mandarin or you know whatever language it is that you might teach. Um, but this could also be a philosophy teacher who's asking students, you know, what's the difference between Kant and Hume and their views on existentialism or whatever it is that you may teach.
Where did you come from? I came from United Arab Emirates, especially from Sharjah. I'm from uh, UAE, especially from Sharjah. All right, so you can see how each student gets a turn to answer, and on each slide, there's a new question. So she would set this up as a comment assignment. She would set the comments required to 22, because that's how many questions there are. And then um, she can go in there and grade. And I'll show you what the grading interface looks like in just a moment. But first, I want to show you the final assignment type, the create assignment. So once again, the process starts off the same way. I find VoiceThread in my menu. I click on it. I'm going to expand this configuration menu out, go to the assignment builder, choose the create assignment, continue. And now I can decide on my students' playback settings. So they're creating the voice thread here for a presentation or demonstration, but I have control over the parameters. So do they have to make a certain number of comments? Maybe I'll say you have to make one minimum for this presentation. And then what about slides? Maybe I don't want any more than 15. So I'm going to set this as a 15 slide maximum. And then which comment types will be allowed? I can go through here and uncheck the ones that I don't want them to use. I can decide if we should have threaded commenting turned on, if I should limit the length of their comment, and then all of these additional options here. All right, now the one that we haven't seen is the student gallery. So this is only available in the create assignment because this gives you a place for students to share their work with the rest of the class. So let's say you want the students to submit their presentation to you for a grade, but also have a place to go to see each other's, to give each other some peer review. You can turn on the student gallery and then you're all set, all right? You click continue. Let's call this one student presentations. I'm gonna add instructions here. Let's just type the word instructions so you can see where it shows up. Obviously you would put some more detail in there about what you expect. And then I'm gonna pick my start date, my due date and my close date. All right, now I can decide if I want students to be able to withdraw and resubmit, so I'll allow that. And then let's go with straight points for this, make it worth 100 points. All right, now a few examples. Obviously, students can create a lecture just like you would create for a presentation, but they could also do demonstrations. So this one happens to be a nurse practitioner student, but this could easily be a music student who's demonstrating how to improvise in Lydian mode on jazz guitar, or this could be a speech student, or you know, a student who's doing anything that you might call them up to the front of the classroom to do, they can do on VoiceThread. Hi, my name is Shantae, and I'm a nurse practitioner student at Maryville University. Today, I will be performing my head to toe assessment on my volunteer Deja. Before coming in, she emptied her bladder. She was offered a gown. She, her height and weight were measured. A full set of vital signs were taken. All right, so as the instructor, you can pause the video, record feedback, continue to play, record more feedback, and engage with the student just like you would in a face-to-face -face classroom presentation. All right, so you can do presentations, demonstrations, but you can also do this stuff with the create assignment. This is one where the instructor asks the students to upload their paper, and she's gonna review this just like she would if the student had printed this out and walked across campus to her office for office hours. Okay, um, you've attempted to talk about something really awesome here. Okay, but you are kind of losing it because you are not you're not introducing this particular idea. So, um, this concept of the banking concept failing to acknowledge men and women as historical beings. Um, this is a really interesting twist in your argument. All right, so I'm going to stop her there, but you can see how she's using that doodle tool to annotate the document as she talks through it. All right, now what I want to show you is how this looks from a student perspective. So this is um, our D2L instance, so it's the same exact thing that, that you have, but I just want to show you what it looks like from uh, my perspective here. So. Let's go into demo assignments and let's click on this one. 
All right, so I am in here as a student now, and I can see the instructions, the requirements, the technical requirements, right? No more than 15 slides, at least one comment. I can see when this is due, how it's graded. When I'm ready to start, I click Start Assignment. And now I can create my voice thread. So these are all the same options that I showed you earlier. The icons are different, but the features are the same. So I can add files from my computer. I can record from webcam. I can add a YouTube video, et cetera. I'm going to go into my computer. And let's go in and find some files. All right, so let's say I want to add these. They're going to start to upload and process. All right. And once they process, I can then go on to record my comments. All right. So now I can start my presentation. And I can say, okay, instructor. So social work is really a combination of three different um, vocations it's counseling, sociology, and psychology mixed. And so I created this Venn diagram to show you blah, blah, blah. Right? Whatever the student is saying, they go through their presentation, they save. All right, now once that comment processes, you'll see that red mark turns to a check mark and the student can submit. All right, but now at this point, maybe I realize, oh wait, I forgot to add my final slide with my sources, like the instructor told me. Because the instructor allowed for resubmission, I can click withdraw submission, go back and make changes, and then resubmit. Right now, I can also get into the student gallery. So let's say I wanted to see my classmates work and give them some peer review. I can click on that student gallery button that will load the gallery in a new tab. And now I can, well, I can see I'm the only one to submit so far. So I'll wait till my classmates catch up later on in the week, but then I can come in here and view their voice threads and record any feedback that I have for them. All right, now I'm just going to log out and show you what the grading interface looks like. Just give me one second to get back into that course. All right, so now I'm the instructor and I go to my grading interface. And what I will see is a list of all the students who have submitted and a list of the students who have not submitted. So the ones who have not submitted would show up as unattempted and or in progress and i'm going to click remind students i can send them a reminder via email if i want but for those who have submitted i can just click on their name it will load their presentation whatever their work is i can play it i can record feedback i can even do that privately if i click on that lock icon i can record private feedback for that student and then when i'm ready i can enter their grade when I click Save Grade, it will put that from the ungraded category into the graded category. All right, and um, that is everything I had planned to show you. Um, do we have other questions? Is there anything else that you wanted to see that I didn't show? Is there anything that you want clarification on? George, uh, that was Brian here. That was great. Um, I was just curious with the VoiceThread homepage, making that available, like in the D2L module. Um, is that something maybe the instructor would want to do, but then hide it from students? Because I know sometimes the students, they can get confused and think they have to actually go to the VoiceThread homepage link and create their voice threads in there instead of going to the actual VoiceThread assignment links. Well, I mean, that, that's something that you would want to preempt with any instructions, right? So I wouldn't ever put a link in a course and not tell the students why I'm doing it. So I would put a homepage link in there and explain to the students, okay, so here's your home base for VoiceThread. You can go here and find the tutorials. If you need support, you can contact VoiceThread support by clicking on this menu. You know, you can find the written instructions by going through the help tab, you know, that sort of thing. So just letting them know, you know, why you're adding stuff into the course, I think is a is an important aspect of that. But um, if you find that that students are, you know, not using VoiceThread properly, you can always make the uh, added adjustments. Great, thanks. 
And I think Max has a yes, question. I do see Max. No, so the assignments all live in that assignment link in the course. You could make a copy of the voice thread that you used in the assignment and then share that copy somewhere. But um, the assignment itself, the original, lives in that link in the course. Um, and then um, just two quick things. You, you probably know about this, George, but for other people, two, two kind of common mistakes we've seen instructors make is, and maybe this is more for the advanced um, training on Monday, but when they copy the course, like next term in D2L, they'll copy the content, but then they'll forget there's another little um, kind of drop down in the copy course for D2L, and they have to pick the external learning tools. So what happens is they'll copy over the content, voice thread assignment with the link, but then it'll be kind of broken or it won't quite work. And they're forgetting that they have to copy a whole other part of the course. Um, if they're copying the whole course, then it's not a big deal. It does it by itself. And then the other big thing is we see sometimes instructors, George went over this, where when the student clicks on the voice thread assignment, that actually puts them in like what I call the voice thread assignment, like roster, where they can see that. Um, but sometimes the instructor gets in there early and they'll see two students in the voice thread assignment. Um, and then they're like, well, why aren't all the other students loaded? Is it not working? Does it not see them? And they just haven't clicked on the link yet. And I think there's even, and this may have changed, so um, I could be wrong at this part, but I think once they click on it, it puts them in the class, in the assignment roster. But then I think there's also a sync that runs like 24 or 48 hours. So sometimes it will show pretty much all the students in the voice thread assignment, even students who have dropped, <laughs> <laughs> which kind of confuses the um, faculty too, but it's really just if the student clicks on the, the assignment link, then it puts them in there. Yeah, any any of the links actually. So that's, you know, any of the homepage links, any of the lectures. So, okay. you know, if you have an assignment in VoiceThread is, as the very first thing they do, I wouldn't recommend that just because you're asking students to learn a new tool when they're doing something for a grade, right? Mm -hmm. So you would want to, you know, get used to VoiceThread, use it for the lectures, have the students access the different links. And then, you know, once you have your first assignment, you know, a couple of weeks into the course or whatever, then the students will be familiar with it and they'll all be in that course group list on the, you know, in the assignment page. Great. All right, Brian. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions right now. Is there anything else you want me to show before we wrap things up? I, th I think that was pretty darn great, um, you know, for the basics. Um, and thanks for doing this again, George. Uh, we'll get the Zoom cloud recording and then we'll share that. And let me know if you want a copy, we can send it to you. And then we, we like to keep these and use them for our own internal and external um, training resources for faculty and stuff, so. Of course. All right, well, um, I just want to say thanks to everyone who was able to join and to anyone who was listening to this recording. Thanks for listening and um, have a great rest of your week and a great weekend and happy Cinco de Mayo. Thanks. Take care, folks.